Uh, my name is Hafsa. Hi Hafsa. Where did you first play football? Which country? Which place? How old were you? Um, I first played in Sheffield, England and I started playing football at the age of three, so in nursery. And um, has anything stopped you playing? Family, culture, life events, lack of provision and how did that feel? Um, my family is supportive but like I'm a Somali person as my background or um, as in the Somali community it's like it's a culture thing that women should stay at home and do things like that but I'm so happy that my parents allowed me to play football for 20 years. Have you experienced any sexism, racism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia or disability discrimination which has had an effect on your football? Um, yeah, racism to be honest, yeah. um, when I was 17, so yeah. Who has been an inspiration for you in playing football? Um, I have a lot of inspiration people, so uh, such as my family support me and another thing is I look up to players as well like Cristiano Ronaldo and all the other famous footballers such as Rashford, um, uh, Messi and all of them. So, and how does playing football make you feel? It makes me relax, I've been playing for 20 years, so it makes me happy. Um, I'm very competitive, so yeah, I learned a lot of things over the past 20 years, so yeah. So thank you very much. Hi, my name is Anna. Anna, where did you first play football? Um, which country, which place, how old were you? Um, I grew up in Nottingham and so I first started playing football when I was about 10 or 11 years old for a team called Westbury for Colts and um, I was plagued with injuries, knee injuries, so it stopped when I was about 14, 15 years old. Has stopped you playing? Obviously you said you're injured. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, family, culture, life events, lack of provision? And how did it feel? Um, Fortunately, I don't think there has been anything that stopped me playing other than the injuries. Um, I came to University in Sheffield and um, briefly joined the football team there, but further injuries stopped me um, playing. So um, I think I've been fairly lucky. My family uh, encouraged me and supported me, even though I come from a family of non sport playing parents and siblings, but nevertheless, every Sunday I was driven to matches. So um, yeah, really quite lucky in that respect. Have you experienced any sexism, racism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia or disability discrimination which has, an, has had an effect on your football? Uh, no, on the contrary, I find it like, well, all the teams I've played with for, including as a child, have been quite safe spaces for queerness generally, I think it's quite a unique thing within certain other football teams. Um, who has been an inspiration for you in playing football? <laughs> Uh, well, when I was playing for Westbridge for Colts, it was Michael Owen. Uh, and then as I've grown up, uh, just the people that in sort of the teams that are fighting against transphobia and homophobia and all of those things, I think it's great to be part of that sort of movement really while playing sport. And how does playing football make you feel? Uh, fearless. Thank you very much, Anna. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Natalie. Uh, I'm 42 years of age and I love to play football. Hi Natalie, uh, where did you first play football? Which country, which place, how old were you? Um, so I was born in England and I started, the first time I ever played was at school. I was about uh, 14, yeah. There wasn't a lot of uh, football in PE, in, in girls PE at the time I was at school, which is a long time ago. Uh, but whatever, yeah, in fact I did play and then I played for a team and then after school I didn't play at all. Has anything stopped you playing? Family, culture, life, ex ex life events, lack of provision, and how did it feel? Um, not so much culture and, and family, no, because like I said, I was, I was brought up uh, in England. Um, it was just the opportunities, no opportunities, like I said, I left school. So when I left school, it was like late 90s, and um, there was nothing that I found easily to get into, so I had to you know, stop playing and I actually took up another sport. I was playing another sport because I found more opportunities in that other sport. I did love, I've always loved football, but I've just not had opportunities. And there's been no, you know, uh, like third, there was none of that, you know, back in, in, in my teens, so yeah. Um, have you experienced any sexism, racism, homophobia, tran biphobia, transphobia, or disability discrimination, which has had an effect on your football? 
No, I haven't. Um, I've been lucky. I haven't experienced any racism or uh, homophobia. <clears throat> the only thing is, like, when I tell people um, at work that I play, and they, they all just say, oh, you know, about all the teams gay and that, and you just laugh at it, and I, I kind of say, well, no, that's not true. But I've not, no, I've not experienced anything. I've had, you know, like, comments like that, but not, nothing uh, negative now. So I've been lucky, yeah. Um, who's well, been an inspiration for you in playing football? Oh, well, I've had it, like I said, when I just recently, last couple of years, started um, taking it up. So I haven't had any from when I was uh, younger, but, um, you know, the England women's team, obviously now, like, you know, all, all the players, um, yeah, um, no, no one really in particular that, that I've looked up to, because, like I say, I've, I've just, I've only just recently started playing. Uh, but, yeah, they are obviously an inspiration now, and, and it's good that there's more coverage of, of England and women's football um, available now, because, like, a few years ago, there was a lot. So yeah. And how does playing football make you feel? Um, like I'm very happy, uh, free, um, and at peace. Yeah, full of joy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, can you tell me your name? Um, it, it's Hayad. Hi Hayad. Can I first, can I ask you where did you first play uh, football? Which country? Which place? How old were you? Um, so I played football when I was, I think, maybe in year two. Um, I played in Furzil Primary School and it was in England. And has anything stopped you from playing? Family, culture, mm -hmm. life events, lack of provision and how did that feel? Well, um, nothing stopped me from playing football but you don't get that much opportunities because you tend to see more boys and men playing football compared to girls. And women. Okay, and have you ever experienced or witnessed any sexism, racism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia or disability discrimination which has had an effect on your football? I oh, know, I haven't yet. Brilliant. <laughs> and who has been an inspiration for you in playing football? Uh, it's been Ronaldinho from Brazil. And how does playing football make you feel? Um, it, it makes me feel very, very great. Um, it's a sport that shows your creative side um, you can you can just I like the, I like doing a lot of skills, and then it, it just just feels pretty cool. Yeah, excellent. Well, thanks very much, Hayad. You're welcome. Hi, can you tell me your name? Hi, my name's Halima. Hi, Halima. Uh, can you tell me where did you first play football? Which country? Which place? How old were you? Um, I first started playing football in school, from what I can remember, and with my neighbours as well. I think I was probably in primary school, so about nine to ten years old. Great. And, and in England. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And has anything ever stopped you from playing? Family, culture, life events, lack of provision, and how did that feel? Um, not really. The only thing that stopped me from playing was probably education, just spending more time studying and not having much free time to do the sport. And have you ever experienced or witnessed any sexism, racism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia or disability discrimination which has had an effect on your football? No. No. That's good to hear. And how does playing football make you feel? Um, it makes me feel great. It's good for just keeping up with the regular exercise and get to meet all my friends here. So it's nice to have kind of a team sport and a team spirit going on. So yeah, it makes me feel good. That's great. Thanks very much, Alina. Thank you. Uh, where did you first play football? Which country? Which place? Um, and how old were you? I, I think I first played football as a young child in Sheffield on the council estate where I grew up. Um, got an older brother who didn't like football but he'd kick a ball around with me. Um, and I was probably about five, I don't know. I remember playing a match when, well not a match, a game with some of the kids. It was a breakthrough moment where it was like this, like a Sunday school type thing that we used to go to, but it was on a Tuesday night run by the church. And when we had a break, we went outside to play in the field and I played and I remember weaving the ball through all these kids and slide tackling somebody and getting into it into goal. And all the kids ran around me and patted me on the back and that, from that moment on I was hooked. <laughs> Has anything stopped you playing, such as family, culture, lack of provision, life events, and if so, how did that feel? Family have never stopped me. They knew I was a tomboy, they let me be a tomboy. Um, I was with, I mean, what we call tomboy in those days, so going back to the late 70s. Um, so, 
they never stopped me. Uh, provision at school probably stopped me because we weren't, girls didn't play football at school sports. I got involved in all the sports at school and I ended up, for field sport, I ended up playing hockey. And I played that all through my secondary school. And um, yeah, it, it, it kind of served me well when I finally went back to football because similar kind of setup. 11 players, similar positioning and everything, so, and it's a team sport, I'm sure. Have you ever experienced or heard about any sexism, racism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia or disability discrimination which has had an effect on your football? Um, well, I, I, growing up there was probably discrimination in that girls didn't really play football. Although I have had kickabouts as an adult with other lads and women and in mixed teams a couple of times and that's because we were friends. Um, yeah, you hear, you, I've heard, I've heard um, remarks about, you know, shouted at women playing football and also you read a lot about it online, you know, you see all those remarks. Um, but I've only come back into playing football in my, I think my early 50s was when I decided to give it a go. Um, I've been to groups that have been very supportive and been around people who have been very supportive. But for me personally, I've not really witnessed much of it at all. But I know it's out there and it's very big. Both sexism, racism, homophobia, all of that does get kind of um, uh, seen in football well, uh, and lots of sports actually as it does in society so yeah it's, it's there but me personally I've not really um, had it myself. Who's been an inspiration for you in playing football? Um, other women I play football with I mean as a kid, there wasn't really any women's football around, so I would, in, in my era, it was Leeds United, you know, like everybody, all the children, supported Leeds United, they won everything. I remember crying, you know, like, for a whole weekend when they lost in the FA Cup to uh, Sunderland. <laughs> um, so I, my heroes are people like uh, any of the Leeds players, we used to commentate to myself as I was kicking the ball around with my friend Julie down the road as I was a, the whole of Leeds United team. Um, modern day um, women's footballers that I really admire, I really admire Megan Rapinoe um, of the US national team uh, for her political stance and her activism and the way she plays as well. Um, but mainly I, I look to all my friends that I play football with and other women, young and old, uh, who come and play week in, week out, and we have fun together, and I learn a whole lot and I enjoy playing with them. How does playing football make you feel? Um, makes me feel, well, you know, really, really happy. That goes without saying, I think. I wouldn't do it if I didn't, if I didn't get enjoyment out of it. Uh, also, I feel strong, and I think, you know, as an older player, still playing, and I have played 11 a side even at an older age, played at grassroots level at 11 a side. Um, I think it makes me feel more like powerful in that, you know, age is no barrier. We see a lot of it in the media, you know, how we should be, how we should behave, what we should be doing at certain ages and all of that. And when I play football, I don't have to think of anything like that because um, I can just be me out on a field with my friends, playing. Winning is a fantastic feeling. Losing is not so good, but you've got your friends to commiserate with. So it's just the community and the family and the friends I have playing football 
and being together through thick and thin, good times and bad. That's why I play football. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's You're great. welcome. <laughs>
Um, and so I just hope that, you know, in 30 years time, there isn't somebody saying, uh, some woman saying, well, I wanted to play football, but I was too embarrassed and I ended up going upstairs and playing football with little China animals instead. So I hope that those days, those days have gone. Hi, my name is Ruth Johnson. Hi Ruth, can you tell me where did you first play football? Which country, which place, how old were you? It was in a small town called Ilkley, which is where I grew up. And uh, I was probably, I don't know, five, six, seven. I can't exactly remember, but it was with my, um, my older brother and my dad. Um, they were always playing football together, so I just went and joined in. And uh, it wasn't until I started trying to play at school that I realised that um, that it wasn't considered normal in those days for a girl to play football. Um, and has anything stopped you playing? Family, culture, life events, lack of provision and how did that feel? Um, yes, uh, it was mainly lack of provision um, when I was growing up, um, well, I'm, since I've grown up as well actually. Um, it made me feel that life was very unfair. Um, uh, I wasn't allowed to play in the primary school team, even though I was clearly good enough. Uh, even a few opportunities to play at secondary school. There weren't many teams at that time. Um, I did go and train with one for about 18 months when I was 12, 13. Um, but it was quite quite a long drive from home, um, just relying on my parents to be able to take me home back. Um, and then as, as an adult, um, came to Sheffield, there was only one team I think when I, when I first came here, um, I, jo I joined another one when I got involved with uh, Sheffield Town University women's football, um, I played 11 a side for about three or four years in my late 20s um, and then dropped out for quite a few years, found some five a side to get involved in for a bit dropped out again when uh, we realised that we were getting older and everyone else was <laughs> getting younger and faster and got more and more demoralising. Um, and then in, in more recent years I've started playing again, um, mainly, mainly through third, setting up for sort of non-competitive recreational football um, and also walking football so hopefully uh, I can carry on playing for a bit longer yet to make up for lost time. Very good. <laughs> Um, and have you ever experienced or witnessed any sexism, racism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia or disability discrimination which has had an effect on your football? Um, there was certainly a lot of sexism around football, uh, still is to some extent, uh, not as much as there was. Um, I think sexism and homophobia are quite closely connected. Um, a lot of the sexism um, has been um, Kind of perpetuating the idea that football is not a feminine, not a feminine game to play, and therefore um, girls or women that play are probably lesbians, and this is a bad, uh, yeah, a bad thing. And so that's that's a kind of the idea. Um, uh, like I was saying before, I wasn't allowed to play uh, very much at school. Um, I've heard a lot of uh, odd excuses for why girls shouldn't play. Um, a common one that we used to hear was um, there, there weren't any change in facilities for girls. Uh, which was obviously, that was an easy one to, to get around. Um, uh, what else? Um, it would probably damage our um, reproductive organs or one thing or another. Um, and far too delicate. Um, Late, more, more recently, I've, I've still heard girls saying um, they prefer playing with girls and boys because boys don't pass the room. Um, uh, yeah, there's all, all sorts of uh, strange, strange ideas going around. And who's been an inspiration for you in playing football? Well, when I was um, 11, I think there was a 12-year-old girl who, like me, also played football and also wore glasses, um, who became quite famous for a while. Her name was uh, Teresa Bennett, um, and she, uh, like me, uh, was not allowed to play football at school anymore after the age of 12. Um, that, was, that was the FA rule at the time. Um, 
and she she sued the FA and uh, uh, yeah so I thought she was wonderful <laughs> it was just really nice for me to, to hear that I wasn't the only the only girl who wants to play football maybe I, I was normal after all um, she lost but she was still the heroine for a while so thank you Teresa Thanks, Ruth, and I'll have to make sure that Teresa Bennett is a name on everyone's lips. <laughs> and finally, how does playing football make you feel? Like a child again. Thank you very much, Ruth. That was wonderful. All right. Hi, my name's Sarah Chinara. Hi, Sarah. Where did you first play football? Which country, place or...? And how old were you? Well, I first started playing football about nine years ago in Sheffield. So, really, as a woman of a certain age, an older woman, it's when I first started playing. Um, it was just kind of sort of a chance happening of the sort of various events coming together, and I signed up for a five a side game, and uh, it all kicked off from there. Uh, has everything stopped you playing football? Um, for example, family culture, life events or lucky provision and how did that feel? I think really, I didn't play football growing up and I think that's largely because just the sort of the culture was that women didn't choose to play football, not sorry, not that women didn't choose to play football, but that was the assumption and that was what um, a lot of women's sports were based on, that football was not a women's game. So there was no football at school for me to play. Um, so I, you know, just whatever I was playing sports, I played other sports, you know. So um, in retrospect, I feel I really, really missed out because um, it's such a massive, massive part of our culture and I just feel that... Um, that opportunity to, to have a go at it and see if I liked it and join in and, and see you know what else was about in terms of women playing football that just wasn't there there when I was growing up. Um, so yeah, I feel I feel in retrospect I feel that was a sort of missed out. Have you experienced or witnessed or heard about any sexism, racism, homophobia, biophobia, transphobia, disability discrimination, um, or any other kind uh, which has had an effect? When you're a football or a lot of people around you? I think because um, I've only played football sort of fairly recently, I think I've been really lucky. I've been in groups that have been um, really proactive in, in making people feel welcome um, and inclusive. So, in that respect, I feel I've probably missed out on, thankfully, missed out on a lot of. Um, the sort of um, the barriers that other women might have might have faced, um, but having said that, I'm just aware of like how much um, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, disability discrimination there is in kind of the football language. I've certainly heard it as a fan, and um, you know I have heard definitely have, have heard casual sexism um, in uh, from other teams um, as part of you know my experience of playing. Um, and really, it's it's just entrenched sexism, which again has sort of stopped people playing football. You know, and it's only sort of more recently that uh, women have had more opportunities to play football. So that's certainly a big, big, big part of my experience. Who's been an inspiration for you in playing football? I have so many inspirations, and I can honestly say, everyone I have played football with since I started playing nine years ago has been a massive, massive inspiration, just for all sorts of different reasons. The, the, the young girls that just really, really love to play and are so enthusiastic, the older women that have never, ever given up, the older women that are coming into football, the people from different backgrounds who've had a traumatic life but find sort of togetherness in the football field and just watching how competitive people are, it's brought out a more competitive side in me. So I've just had so many inspirations at Bird, at AFC Unity, um, Nannies all over Sheffield, so just loads of people to thank. How does playing football make you feel? It makes makes me feel happy and a little bit frightened because I'll always feel a little bit like a beginner. So a nice balance of kind of anxiety and happiness, which is brilliant. <laughs> right, thank you very much. Thank that you. Was great. Oh, hi, my name is Renee. Hi, Renee. Um, where did you first play football? Which country? Uh, which place? How old were you? Uh, so I first started playing football in London. I was about ten years old, and I used to play for my primary school team. And uh, has anything ever stopped you playing football? Family, culture, life events, lack of provision, and how did that feel? Um, I think. I don't think anything stopped me other than just time, like having free time to play football. 
Um, so sometimes my own personal schedule can interfere with um, my ability to play football. Uh, but I don't think any like I don't think culture or anything has, has interfered with my ability to play. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, have you ever experienced or witnessed any sexism, racism, bi uh, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, disability discrimination, any other sort of discrimination which has had an effect on your football? Um, I think you're definitely playing football when I was in like secondary school. Um, we didn't really have like a girls team, so I used to play with the boys and there'd be like a lot of sexism um, and yeah, just little comments that like guys would make towards girls um, that wasn't really welcoming, but there was always like someone that would kind of jump in and say, you know, just because she's a girl doesn't mean she can't play. Um, and then I think, yeah, that's kind of affected, affected my confidence, I guess, until like the women's team came along. Uh, all the girls team at my school came along and then I felt a little bit more comfortable playing with the girls, so that was really nice. And who has been an inspiration for you in playing football? Um, that's a big question. Um, an inspiration? Um, I guess the coaches that I've had over the years have been a really big inspiration. Um, I think coaches can really encourage you and build your confidence. Um, so I've had quite a few different coaches over the years and um, I think they're probably the most inspiring people because um, yeah they've really got to like motivate you and encourage you uh, and obviously encourage you to come back and play uh, so I think yeah all the coaches across the years also just like famous football players have been really inspiring as well. And uh, how does playing football make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel really connected um, I think playing football is a great way to meet new people um, to connect other people it's a great way to keep fit so I feel quite um, like healthy after I've played as well, especially um, obviously we've been in the pandemic and we've been indoors for quite, for quite a long time. So coming outdoors again and connecting with other people has, has been great. So yeah, football makes me feel good. Thank you very much, Lene. Maddy Chamberlain. Hi Maddy. Um, where did you first play football? Which country, which place, how old were you? Here, England. I've literally never been away. I'm probably in primary school, or if before that, probably with my dad. So maybe like four or five. All right. And uh, has anything ever stopped you playing? Family, culture, life events, lack of provision, and how did that feel? Um, I remember when I was younger, because my dad was a big Wednesday. I, he tried to get me to play for Sheffield Wednesday, and my mum would just not allow it because she's a Blades fan. So it stopped me. And the back, but I could have had a place with that team, but it just stopped me in there. So I just had to play for school. It felt alright, but I would have rather played for a bigger team. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and have you ever experienced or witnessed any sexism, racism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, disability discrimination, any other sort of discrimination which has had an effect on your football? Oh, um, I won't really say discrimination. I think the most I get is because obviously I don't exactly look the most feminine, do I? So when I turn up to a team, everyone's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm a girl, like, well, we can't take you on because you look like a boy of people with questions. That's probably the most I've had. I don't think I've really had any homophobia or anything against me. I think every team I've been with has been quite good so far. Oh, that's good to hear. And uh, who's been an inspiration for you in playing football? Probably my dad. He used to take me like, to parks more or less every day after school and just have a kick about. And he, he taught me my strength because he just used to sling me out for. <laughs> and how does playing football make you feel? I don't even ask what answer is. I feel like a lot happier because I go through like, I've got quite a bit of mental health. So when I'm playing football, it's like everything that's on my head. It's just a clean slate, like there's nothing there. The only thing I'm concentrating on is getting the ball back in there. So it helps me a lot. That's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Maddie. Hello, my name is Dagmar. Where did you first play football? Which country, um, which place, and how old were you? Um, so it was um, in Czech Republic, so that's where I was born. And I was, I think, about nine years old, and I was in school, and um, yeah, that's it. Has anything stopped you from playing, such as family, culture, life events, or lack of provision, or anything else? And how did that feel as so? Um, I think at that time it was um, lack of 
provision really so there were no um, girls or women's teams although in Czechoslovakia in 1968 there was a first um, football uh, club or well a national team really so they were one of the, the pioneers in Central Europe but um, unfortunately um, um, I was brought up in a sort of small small village and um, although there were boys teams and men's teams um, obviously when I reached um, sort of teenage age um, that, that was it. Have you ever experienced any sexism, racism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia or disability discrimination which has led, which has had an effect on your football or have you been aware of any? Uh, well definitely um, there was and there still is um, sexism, not racism because um, I'm, I'm white um, so, so definitely sexism, um, football is not something that um, girls or women would normally play, um, at least um, not really, sort of um, 20, 30 years ago. Um, so it has changed now. Um, there are a couple of um, really good players um, playing um, for Western United, um, like um, Katarzyna Spitkova from Czech Republic and, and others. Um, but um, obviously a lot has changed, um, but I think we still have quite a long way to, to go. So we should support um, young girls and young women, or even older women, to get into football and, and play for fun, but also um, if they have talent, um, to develop that talent and, and to play on a, on a higher level. Who has been an inspiration for you in playing football? Yes, I had to think long and hard about that, and I can't, I can't say, uh, I don't think that there has been anyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Um, have you noticed any differences between um, attitudes towards women's football in the Czech Republic and in Britain? Um, I, th I think it is um, quite more, more open, the attitude, and um, because there are you know, at least where I live now in, in Sheffield, there are more um, girls and women playing football. And the more, you know, the higher numbers, the, the, the more people can see it and, and young girls and, and women, therefore they can join in. So I think the more people do that, the more people join in. Okay. And finally, how does playing football make you feel? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Aisha and today I'm going to be talking to you about my football experiences. I've been playing football for many years, started playing from around the age of five. I played for many teams and started off playing for cross school as well as played with my family and the school and uh, school team as well. Since then I've played for many teams such as Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United, Sheffield FC etc. Now I currently play for Utrecht Women's. During my time, I only witnessed that there was a minority group of ethnic minorities as well as Muslim players. I feel that is one of the main reasons why when I started wearing the hijab, the headscarf, I took a year out. This was due to a lack of self-confidence from a lack of role models, but as well as the football culture. The football culture is specifically aimed at specific individual um, and exclusive groups. For example, football culture is still mainly associated with going to the pub and drinking. This has excluded me in certain certain circumstances. For example, one of the teams I used to play for, the meetings were in a pub, therefore excluded me because I wouldn't associate myself within that, that situation, within that environment. Another reason is um, the university, the coaches and te uh, teammates used to go out drinking after certain sessions, after games. and. This excluded certain individuals, including myself. This prevented us from creating that group cohesion and team dynamic. And I felt this when in training that coaches would give more support to those who would go out with them more than um, those who wouldn't go. Therefore, I felt a bit of like an outsider within my own team. Another thing is the hijab was banned and only only um, uplifted. This ban was only uplift, uplifted recently in 2012, and I feel again 
the FBA has done little with dress code as well because I receive negative perceptions for wearing leggings for example or due to wearing the hijab I again receive certain discrimination from other players for example they wouldn't treat me equally as those who wear the wearing a scarf or who they were for the more with for example they wouldn't pass to me they wouldn't trust, the, uh, trust me with the ball but also the coaches they would treat me differently as well the coaches they didn't. They provided me with less support than other players, and also in trials, they treat again. So me as an individual, not so how I play. They saw how I looked rather than how I play. Again, I felt there were some circumstances I felt these discriminated about how I looked. But I've always gone through this, and this is due to my family support. They've always encouraged me to keep going, and also my personality and my belief to keep striving and also the goals I want to achieve to make football more inclusive for others. This is because we know sport is such an essential part of society and it can help with bringing um, individuals together and ensuring that everyone's treated equally. So which is another reason why I keep going. What I enjoy from football as well um, is the fact that you meet new individuals, you make friends but also I'm proud to achieve certain things such as overcoming the norms as well as society perceptions but also achievements I've made throughout football which has helped me to encourage me to keep going as well. This has made me proud as well. So hopefully from speaking today about my experiences it will help others to keep going, to overcome them barriers, to overcome them norms um, as well. And thank you. The following poem incorporates the words of football greats Nettie Honeyball, Alex Scott, Lucy Bronze, Rachel Yankee, Mia Hamm, Julie Foody, Becca Saubron, Ashlyn Harris, Kristen Lilly, Abby Wambach and Sydney LaRue. My coach said that I run like a girl. I said if he ran a little faster, he could too. Mia Hamm, American football player and international star of the game. Run like a girl. They called us reckless novelties, thought us useless, ornamental, imposed their ban for 50 years. But the past doesn't matter. We are lighting a fire and every day we train, add more fuel. So all right, call us tomboys. Tomboys win medals, championships can fly. And there's no better feeling than stepping onto the field and stunning them by doing what none of them thought we could. Proud of who we are, it's all about the team. Along with winning medals, we embrace the painful lessons, the sacrifices made. For the buzz we feel at kickoff, that tingle in our stomachs, those smiles on all our faces. For no one individual wins this game alone. Strategically astute, we work on weaknesses, make them into strengths. Learning from each other, we fight each fight with passion. We are the role models for future generations, overcoming obstacles. We play with skill and heart, know when to strike that match. Leaving a legacy where the ball keeps rolling forward, breaking barriers and perceptions, surpassing expectations, running like girls. <laughs>